Yuta Okotsu is by far one of the strongest characters that the series of Jujutsu Kaisen has to offer. With his massive reserves of cursed energy, Rika Orimoto, and his copy cursed techniques, he has risen to become a character boasting the title of second to Gojo. And in this video, me and my friend No Operator will be putting his strength to the test as we pit him up against the full might of the disaster cursed spirit. Does Yuta have the power to contend with four separate special grade level cursed spirits, or would this be too much even for someone of Yuta's caliber. Okotsu Yuta, the cursed child, is a natural prodigy in sorcery that has completely carved out his own path to the strongest through sheer force of will and a reliance on the power of others. From the earliest days we have seen of Okotsu, the child was blessed with overwhelming power, spilling over enough that when his closest childhood friend died before him, his denial of her death led to a devastating curse being placed upon her, not only dragging her back to the realm of the living, but contorting her gentle soul into one of the most powerful cursed spirits to ever exist. Since Volume Zero, we have seen Yuta grow into his strength fairly well, wielding his power responsibly and growing at an immense rate in short spans of time. From the moment he made a promise to change and protect the people who he grew to hold close, the child did nothing but excel quickly becoming enough of a monster in close quarter combat to rival Maki Zenin, and only following this feat by defeating a special grade sorcerer in a battle to the death. While in the process of this, he masters reverse curse technique, discovers the core of his cursed energy, begins developing the makings of his own curse technique, and somehow, some way, tames the murderous calamity that is Rika Orimoto's curse. Fast forward to the most recent arc of the story, the cursed child has only begun to leave his mark on Jujutsu society, proclaiming himself as Kenjaku's exterminator. The one to replace his sensei as Jujutsu's strongest sorcerer, Okotsu Yuta has only further solidified himself in the realm of the strongest after his feats in Sendai. Finally able to flex some of the abilities he's teased in his introduction, some being the key word here. Throughout his fights with Kurorushi, Ishigori, and Yuro, Okotsu Yuta displays his absolute tenacity in battle, capable of adapting to any possible scenario, even without his curse technique. Yuta was able to break a disaster curse level spirit with his bare hands and implode it with positive cursed energy being output from his mouth, shown to also rival Ishigori, who is known as having the highest output of cursed energy ever seen, with attacks from his sword, as well as his bare hands and energy blasts. He is also shown to be able to change his hand-to-hand -hand style to fit his opponent, remaining a dangerous threat, regardless of if his sword is present or not. Daring enough to use his own limbs as a shield, while also remaining powerful enough to tank the attack as well, and use his reverse curse technique to heal any damage he may take. This explanation doesn't do justice to the massive threat Okotsu Yuta presents in just a natural flow of battle. For if deemed necessary, Okotsu is not a true one-man fight. Presented against a group effort, or just a powerful enough opponent in general, now fully tamed and able to be fully or only partially manifested, Rika Orimoto is able to provide dangerous support to Okotsu in close quarters or even from a distance. As even in Sendai, Yuta fights Yoro and Ishigori quite a distance away from the stadium where Rika is defending civilians. Rika is shown to be able to completely stop people like Itadori Yuji in their tracks and fight blow for blow with Ishigori Ryu, albeit having a limit for the amount of damage she can take. And if for some reason, if none of this is enough, Okotsu Yuta is still able to fully unlock his potential through synchronization with Rika, in where he will gain access to his full storage of cursed energy, his copy curse technique, and an arsenal of cursed tools. His already boundless cursed energy growing even larger in size, while his weaponry possibilities extend greatly. His copy technique allows him the ability to utilize the curse techniques of those he has taken some piece of in any shape or form. Mirroring his desire for friendship and his tendency to lean on his friends for his power, Okotsu is shown to be able to use techniques like Cursed Speech, Druv's Orbiting Shikigami, and Euro Sky Manipulation. Not only is he possibly capable of many more techniques, he also has an entire domain expansion that can be stacked on top of this. I feel as if there's nothing really left to be said. Second only to Satoru Gojo and pure unnatural strength, Okotsu Yuta sits atop the hierarchy of the Jujutsu world from the very top, looking down upon the beings below with disinterest. Thank <laughs> you.
I've scaled the disaster curse spirits in great detail on the channel before, but I'll give you all a very quick rundown of what these characters can do. Dagon in his fight is shown to be strong enough to one shot Maki in a single attack if it were to land as she states herself. On top of this, Dagon shows enough durability to take on the combined attacks from Naobito, Nanami, and Maki without playful cloud. This is rather impressive considering how powerful the strikes of these characters must be in tandem, but it is important to note that Dagon's technique did start to wane after continuous bombardment, however he was able to take on these characters and their attacks nonetheless. In terms of speed, he's much less impressive considering that even within his own domain expansion, Maki is fast enough to react to an attack from him and block it effectively. The fact that domain expansions are stated to amp the user stats, combined with the fact that pre-awakened Maki of all people was able to react, shows that his speed is likely the least impressive thing about him. With his domain sure hit technique in full effect, he's definitely able to compensate for his lackluster speed, but it is important to note that Dagon by no means is a speedster. When it comes to Hanami, his scaling is also very strong straightforward. When his soul is unconstrained and he starts to enjoy the battle, he is powerful enough to survive the combined onslaught of Yuji and Toto in the Goodwill art. His durability is definitely one of the highest amongst the Disaster Curse Spirits, however in Chapter 49, Hanami states that individually, Yuji and Toto have enough power to harm him. The damage isn't nearly enough to threaten his life in a single blow, but it's powerful enough for him to know throughout the fight that they are steadily hurting him. He's able to return the favor though, exchanging blows with Yuji and damaging him as well throughout their battle. We do also see that within this fight, Hanami is able to react to the attacks of Yuji, even when assisted by Boogie Woogie, which definitely speaks to the speed and adaptability of Hanami when given enough time to analyze his opponent. In terms of techniques and general hacks, Hanami isn't that crazy, really only possessing wood and nature manipulation. He does possess those cursed energy draining buds which can be useful in a fight, however if the opponent is intelligent enough they'll just shut off their cursed energy so it isn't drained. On top of his innate technique we do know that he possesses a domain expansion and domain amplification which under the right conditions could prove extremely useful. Moving on to Jogo we see that he is definitely the glass cannon of all the curses. Stated to be stronger than Hanami in the chapter 51 extras we know that Jogo at least has enough output to hurt someone like Hanami, but in the same breath it is confirmed that Jogo's durability is much lower than Hanami's. Rather than rely on being very tanky in battle, it's in character for Jogo to hit his opponents fast and hard, shown perfectly when he attacked Nanami, Maki, and Naobito directly after leaving Dagon's domain. When truly looking for Jogo's upper scaling limit, however, I refer to his fight with Sukuna and the several statements that place him vaguely above the level of Three Finger Sukuna in terms of strength. Using both of these pieces of information, we can determine that Jogo's maximum meteor has output that could harm Sukuna if it hits, and Jogo's speed should be like that of Sukuna with three fingers, which is pretty impressive to say the least. Based on Dagon's statement, he should be below the likes of two arm Naobito, and I think the fact that even one arm Naobito's speed caught him off guard should somewhat attest to that. Just like Hanami, Jogo has both a domain expansion and a domain amplification, however Jogo in character seems to be too intimidated to use a domain against an opponent vastly stronger than him. Whether or not this would apply to Yuta is something that me and no operator will be determining later in this video, but before we get to that, I need to talk about the cursed spirit that will present Yuta with his biggest troubles, Mahito. Now, Mahito's physical scaling is super simple in both base and in his true form. For base Mahito scaling, we know that he is above the likes of Yuji and Toto in speed. This is confirmed several times as he shows the ability to consistently react to the tandem attacks of the brothers and even respond with attacks of his own. He does see Toto as a bit of an issue to catch you to his technique, but Mahito shows feats that place him undoubtedly above Toto in combat, like reacting to and beating up Yuji, who is able to react faster than Toto here. In terms of AP, he's also very straightforward in base. He can harm Yuji with his base level attacks and when amped by Black Flash he can almost kill him in one shot. Mahito's durability while in base isn't something that is super highlighted, but I do think it's worth noting that while Mahito didn't tank these, he did take several full haymakers from Yuji throughout their entire bout without dying, which isn't something just any character can do. His act speaks for themselves for the most part, honestly. He's invulnerable to the attacks of those who can't attack the soul, he can manipulate other people's soul, and he can use transfigured humans for various dubious reasons. Now, Maito in base is impressive, but when he's in his true form, he becomes a totally different level of curse altogether. He's stated to get 200% tougher after transforming and becomes so tough that Yuji's regular attacks do absolutely no damage and get shrugged off, with the gap between them being so large that only a 100% cursed energy blast Black Flash could finish the job. It's also stated that if Yuji didn't get that clutch Black Flash right before Mahito transformed, he would have been torn to shreds, meaning Mahito likely scales above this Yuji in just about every stat when in his true form. In terms of hacks, this Mahito is definitely less versatile than his base form in exchange for just raw, 
indisputable power. He does still have the ability to transfigure people through his hands, however while in that form he cannot change shape through the use of idle transfiguration. He does get a really cool set of blades on his elbows that are strong enough to tear through Yuji's flesh, but in comparison to the nigh infinite amount of possibilities in base, true form Mahito is a bit limited in what he can do. With that being said, I have gone over the Disaster Curse's combat potential. Some of them are much much more dangerous than others, but all of them pose a major threat to characters that exist within Jujutsu Kaisen. The question is, are they strong enough to contend with Yuta Okotsu himself? One thing to focus on is the vast gap that exists between beings that hold the title of special grade. What makes a cursed spirit a special grade is not at all comparable to the criteria that separates special grade sorcerers from an upper level grade 1 veteran. The point being made here is that, in simple terms, only something capable of qualifying as an absolute anomaly in the Jujutsu world is credible with reaching these heights. Even among cursed spirits, there is a clear separation in strength between creatures like the finger bearers and the literal embodiment of humanity's deepest and most expansive fears. Set apart from the rest, the title of disaster is not wasted on the four spirits. That being said, even among their own ranks, someone like Mahito presents a much larger threat than his counterparts, regardless of the role he plays. Solo or as backup, the versatility and challenge he adds to a fight creates multiple advantages for him and his team. Why does any of this matter? Well, the important question is, if even among the powerful there exists outliers, characters who excel well beyond the mold of just dangerous foes, Mahito being an excellent example of this, saying that four special grades are going up against one special grade doesn't necessarily mean much, does it? When an unstoppable force meets an immovable object, friction is inevitable. Okotsu Yuta, an absolute monster who, as described earlier, thrives off his ability to adapt to others around him, especially his opponents, holds enough merit to present each disaster curse a significant threat despite every difference in fighting style and technique. Against Dagon, while perhaps sharing similar levels of strength and back and forth offensive power, as Ronin mentioned before, against someone like Yuta, the lack of speed would present Dagon with a proper challenge to keep up with the prodigy. Although Dagon's water manipulation does pack a punch, as shown in his first battle with Kurarushi, Okotsu's cursed energy output is able to contend with almost any force, whether it be with weapon or skin. Yuta's determination to reach an enemy cannot be denied. Now, not just even Dagon, but all of our disaster curses have been shown to be able to handle multiple high-level threats at once and keep their composure. Both Hanami and Mahito have fought two-on-ones and provided enough offensive power to keep both enemies busy. Hanami was even able to deduce Boogie Woogie's tricks, and Mahito is just a monstrous force capable of splitting himself into clones, or using his near-endless storage of transfigured humans to provide area-of-effect attacks to keep the high Ground. The point that I'm making here is, going through each individual curse and how they compare to Okotsu is honestly just pointless. They each present Yuta with a decent enough opposition that all of them would be capable opponents in their own right. It would take hours to discuss and evaluate each individual disaster and how they would act around Yuta. Frankly, it would be easier to work backwards. Okotsu Yuta defeats all four of the disaster curses because none of them would be able to bring him down. Case closed. To be honest, I don't even think if they were all to team up and come at Yuta at once, they would stand a chance. And the reason is, well, it seems Yuta Okotsu just wouldn't allow any other outcome. Another way to phrase that would be, Yuta has an answer for anything and everything the disaster curses can and will throw at him. Dagon's massive water attacks, Hanami's manipulated forest strikes, and even Jogo's coordinated fire or lava blast. Just from his display in Sendai Colony alone, a powerful technique does not grant you the win against a technical fighter like Okotsu. Fast enough to dodge any of their attacks, shown from any previous fights the disaster curses have had with lower level sorcerers, even if contact is made, Yuta would be capable of withstanding the damage. Even the strongest curse in the elemental trio, Jogo, would have trouble piercing the shield provided to Yuta by his boundless cursed energy. And Yuta's reverse curse technique honestly puts both human and curse on equal levels of regeneration for once in the series. Speaking of reverse curse technique, as we've seen from his defeat of Kurarushi, as well as remarks from Sukuna on the dangers of positive energy when existing as a cursed spirit. Yuta's ability to output positive energy adds a much more dangerous aspect to the fight than the elemental disaster's attacks ever could. And with Okotsu's hand-to-hand -hand exceeding anything the three would be capable of, without domain expansions, the cursed techniques of Dagon, 
Jogo and Hanami are nothing in the face of the Cursed Child. The threat of being overwhelmed by them all at once can't even be considered, thanks to having full backup and blind spot support from a manifested Rika, who, based off credible sources and testimonies in the series, can give any of the three elemental disaster curses a run for their money on her own. While debatable what way the battle would end up shaping out, whether Yuta needs to duel up with a manifested Rika to stay with the momentum of combat, or if he's able to weasel a victory by eliminating his threats one by one, much like he did in Sendai Colony, while keeping the area under control. For the sake of digging my heels in, I would go so far as to say Akotsu wouldn't even need to grace the three elemental disasters with his copy curse technique to get the W. The more contentious part of this group fight would be the role Mahito plays. As stated before, whether Bai is lonesome, or perhaps even especially more as a member of a group, he himself is an anomaly of danger in the Jujutsu world. A step up in close quarters combat compared to his allies, be that because of his idle transfiguration's range and his constantly developing fight IQ, Mahito should be able to keep up with Akotsu due to the sheer nature of any hit from Mahito, meaning a potential one-hit kill. While we've seen even middle-of-the-road sorcerers like Nanami capable of withstanding even one hit from Mahito's innate technique, Akotsu should really only be at most able to handle two or three of those before his soul gets distorted. His problems with Maito arise in the fact Yuta clearly cannot fight as freely while Maito himself exists in the situation. As a backup fighter, Maito is devious enough to snake in and out of battle and attack when Yuta is most vulnerable. His techniques also allow for long range. While Rika can provide meaningful support, I would be scared to find out just what Mahito could do to Rika's existence. I would go so far as to say Yuta would also be frightened of this, neglecting to have Rika make contact with the monster either. Becoming a race against time to eliminate threat after threat while avoiding Mahito, unlike most sorcerers though, Okotsu is capable of getting a kill shot on the demon, as positive energy would still be a viable aspect of eliminating the cursed spirit makeup of Mahito's entire existence. Much like no operator, I think that the biggest and baddest threat the disaster curses present is Maito himself. The likes of Hanami and Dagon would be taken out with more ease than Kurushi was, and because in this scenario, Yuta doesn't necessarily have to protect civilians, he's likely to use Rika's partial manifestation in combat in a way he didn't before. Keep in mind, this partial manifestation of Rika is so powerful that a post Shibuya Yuji could not move a muscle under her grip. Due to Dagon and Hanami both, at best, being relative to Yuji's physical strength themselves, they would easily be caught by Rika and taken out without Yuta having to break much of a sweat. Yuta's ability to not only pierce Yuji casually with his broken blade, but capability of outputting positive energy confirms that. If you are wondering what Jogo and Maito would be doing while this is going on, don't even bother. The fact that Naoya makes it clear that Yuta is genuinely scary for him to fight implies that he thinks he would be able to keep pace with him in terms of speed. This same Naoya was able to perception blitz Yuji casually, and that Yuji was able to keep pace physically with Maito in his true form. Needless to say, Yuta is most likely moving much, much faster than any of the spirits present if he decides it's necessary to go all out. Even if you just want to argue that they are more relative in terms of speed, Yuta has fought multiple opponents on the level of these cursed spirits simultaneously and eked out a win before. Now, Jogo would require a bit more effort from Yuta in this fight, however even he would fall quickly in the presence of Yuta's overwhelming cursed energy and power. Jogo doesn't really have an answer to any of the abilities that Yuta has, and in fact even with Jogo it wouldn't be necessary to fully manifest Rika, and he should be able to have her watch his back and keep Mahito at bay while he uses positive energy to finish the fight quickly. Next up on the chopping block would be Mahito, and at this point I think Yuta would probably be dipping into his reserves of cursed energy a bit. After exercising three special grades I think even he would start to feel it a little. Regardless, he would still outclass Maito in just about every statistic and force him to pull out every last trick in his book to catch the sorcerer off guard. I think it's likely that at this point, Maito would recognize that he needs to bring out his full power if he even hopes to be Yuta, and he would unleash his domain expansion on him. For the sake of argument, let's say that Maito is wary of Yuta countering with his own domain and uses a point too. Now, I think it's possible that due to the speed difference, Yuta could actually react to this blitz attempt, but let's be charitable to Maito and say that he isn't. Based on how it affected Toto, it's likely that the brief contact would only be enough to get his hand or some other small extremity which Yuta could cut off and regenerate using reverse curse technique. For all those who think Maruto would use a regular domain expansion instead of a point two in order to go for a sure kill, that would turn out worse for him as Yuta would simply counter with a domain of his own. Even if Yuta's domain isn't as potent or refined as Mahito's, it's likely they would simply cancel out each other's sure hit ability and they would duke it out until one of them could not maintain the domain anymore. Either way, at this point, Yuta would likely be backed enough into a corner stamina-wise to fully unleash Rika, and from this point, he would essentially 
dominate the fight. Because immediately after Mario uses domain expansion, either the point two or the full version, depending on which interpretation of this fight you want to have, his technique wouldn't work and Yuta would have the perfect opportunity to exercise him. Due to Maito not having auto transfiguration, that means if he's killed, he's killed. And in the unlikely event Yuta doesn't take this opportunity, he can do one of two things. He can either fight Mahito and run out the clock in terms of cursed energy, or he can have Rika chew on Mahito's arm, take out a transfiguration for himself, and make this battle much, much, much less drawn out. Now, I think it's self-evident that a Rika supercharged Yuta would massively outclass a fatigued Maito, which would allow Yuta to take either of these strategies that I laid out. Depending on which one you think is more likely, more in character, or just less difficult, you can pick whichever one, but the outcome is still the same with Yuta taking this fight versus the curses. In tandem with the rest of the curse spirits, Maito would definitely pose a big threat, and even in some interpretations, may be able to eke out a win. But in most scenarios, in the face of Yuta, Kotsu, and his power, he'd fall just like the rest. Massive thanks to No Operator for joining me on this video. It's really nice to have another perspective on HG2 versus Battle as large as this. And make sure to go check out his channel. He makes amazing JJK content just like myself and really provides a unique energy in the space. If you did enjoy this video, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you are notified when I upload more Jujutsu Kaisen battles just like this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll make sure to see you in the next one.